वेलकम टू सेलिंग साक दिस इज योर फ्रेंड चीफ ऑफिसर विमलेश कुमार सिंह और आज मैं आपको इस वीडियो में साठ के बारे में बताऊंगा वॉट इज साठ एंड हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू यूज इट एंड ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन विच आर रिलेटेड टू साठ सो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज योर साठ सर्च एंड रेस्क्यू रेड आर ट्रांसफर अंडर दिस इज नंबर वन एंड नंबर टू सो ऑन ईच ट्रिप on a container ship or any cargo ship you are provided with two sarts so i'm going to show you my sart this is on the starboard side you can see my ship and this is my starboard side so here you have one sart and other one you have on other side this is my port side of my ship and here also you have one sart over here this is my port side and you can see here also you have one shot on the port side inside the bridge so you've entered your survival craft but now you need to be rescued even with ships searching in the correct area narrowing down your exact location can be a real challenge that's where a sart can help they attract the attention of passing vessels by actually drawing on their radar screen. Activated correctly, it will point the searchers in the right direction, increasing your chances of being rescued. SART stands for Search and Rescue Transponder. It's an active device, meaning it transmits a signal to draw attention to itself. It's triggered when it detects a pulse from a radar. As soon as it does, it transmits multiple pulses straight back, painting a series of 12 distinctive echoes on the screen, guiding the searching vessel towards its location. They operate at 9 gigahertz, which means they show up on an X-band 3 cm radar screen. Day to day, the units themselves require very little maintenance. All you need to do is make sure they're clean and dry, check the battery expiry date, and test them monthly. Every unit is different, so you do need to check the instructions. On this unit, you can just slide the switch to the test position to temporarily activate it. It will indicate whether the internal test is successful, often with a light. If you have radar, you can also check the screen to check it's responding correctly. In an actual emergency, you need to make sure you take it with you. There's no rush to activate it, especially if you're still close to your original vessel. That will paint a large echo anyway, and may even block the SART's transmission. Once you are clear, you can then set it up. To activate the SART, you normally just need to remove a pin. It should then indicate to you that it's working. Once active, it needs to be mounted as high as possible. The higher it is, the further away it will be detected. In the water, you can expect only a mile or so. On the floor of a life raft, it's not much better, maybe two or three miles, if you're lucky. But mounting one metre high, it must be able to be detected at least five miles away. One metre is the height of IMO performance standards, and it should have been designed to comply with that. Salts have enough battery to last 96 hours in standby mode, that's four days, and eight hours in transmission mode. Of course, it should only actually be in transmission mode when another vessel is close enough to detect it. If you have multiple SARTs, it's important to only activate one at a time. Using one ensures that the radar return maintains its distinctive nature and can't be confused with another echo. The other point to note is to never use a SART and a radar reflector close together there's always a chance that the radar reflector will block the SART signal. Once it's all set up, you just need to wait for a radar to be close enough to activate the SART. For the approaching vessel, the first sign that there's a SART operating is the characteristic dots on their radar screen. At long range, these show as 12 dots in a line, originating from the SART's location. The first return is the SART itself, and the further dots are the extra echoes generated by the SART. The extra echoes will be 0.6 miles apart, so they can be seen best on a 6 or a 12 mile range setting, as they will span a total of 7.2 miles across the screen. 
Another major factor is the height of the radar looking for it. A surface craft with a scanner height of 15 meters, you can expect those performance standards of 5 miles for a correctly mounted start. This then increases for bigger ships with higher radar scanners. The greatest range will be from aircraft searching around 3,000 feet. They may pick it up at even 40 miles away. Once the SERP begins generating these extra echoes, it indicates to its user that it's under interrogation. Often this is by a flashing light or an audible signal. It tells the survivors there's an X-band radar operating nearby, and should act as somewhat of a morale boost. Knowing that there are vessels close by is also a good indication that traditional flares will be spotted. Even at maximum range, rocket parachute flares should still be visible to the vessel that has activated the SART. Hopefully, now the SART, or maybe even the flares, have attracted the attention of the other vessel. They can use the shape of the echo to locate the survival craft. As they draw nearer, the dots on their radar screen become arcs. This is because the scanner is picking up the returns across a larger angle. The closer it gets, the larger the angle that the scanner can detect the SART, so the larger the arcs become on the screen. Eventually the arcs become full circles, showing that the approaching vessel is now very close to the SART's location. If all goes well, the survival craft should be clearly visible, and survivors can be rescued.